Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all doing really, really well and welcome to another reading vlog. I've missed you. I know it's only been a week or so, two weeks of that vlog, but I have still missed you. So in today's vlog, I am taking it back and we are doing a reading anticipated new releases video. I was doing these loads throughout the first half of the year and I absolutely loved it. And yeah, I'm bringing it back. I'm going to be reading three very exciting books that have either come out in October, like just come out last month, or are coming out or have come out in November. And I can't wait because these are three books that I have been wanting to read for a while now. And I'm very excited about it. But before I tell you about the book, speaking of new and exciting things, this video is actually really kindly sponsored by Anna Luisa Jewelry. You might know I absolutely love Anna Luisa. We've worked together before and I'm really excited to be working with them again. So Anna Luisa are a jewelry brand. If you know me, you know I love my jewelry. I'm always wearing like a million rings in every video and people always ask me where they're from. And until I started working with Anna Luisa, they were all like so, so old. Like I was wearing the same rings for years, but now now I not only have some new beautiful jewellery I can actually tell you where it's from and as well as making really beautiful really affordable jewellery they're also a really sustainable jewellery brand they offset 100% of the carbon emissions that go into like everything like the making of the jewellery the distribution and I think that's just really amazing to see that not only is it like affordable and like really really well made jewellery it is also environmentally conscious so as I say I do have a lot of jewellery on today but I want to specifically talk about the three pieces that were sent to me for this video so you know I love my rings um, and I have this which is the Michelle signet ring this beautiful green ring I absolutely love like a statement ring I can wear it on a couple of fingers actually which I love as well this is $85 full price I do actually have a discount for you I also got let's stay on rings this beautiful ring here which is the mecca off-white ring I'll take this one off to show you better it is just this absolutely gorgeous like white and gold ring it is a little bit different but I absolutely love that because I always think you find really interesting pieces on Eloisa and yeah the mecca off-white ring is $59 full price and then finally get a bit close and personal this beautiful necklace so this is the fortuna necklace it's got this beautiful kind of like shiny holographic effect to it it's also adjustable to three lengths which i love and yeah i just think these pieces are so so stunning by themselves or as I am today with a lot of other jewelry on. And as I say, Anna Luisa are actually running their biggest deal of the year right now. They're doing buy one, get one 60% off on everything site-wide. I'll leave my link in the description, which will take you to the deal. And yeah, I'd honestly highly recommend that you go check out the jewelry because it is beautiful. I do love it. And yeah, thanks again to Anna Luisa for sponsoring this portion of the video. Okay, so let's get back into the books I'm gonna be reading. The first book that I have is Trust by Domenico Starnone. This is actually a translation piece of fiction from Italian by the author who I'd never heard of but is like a hugely hugely famous Italian author to the point where people thought for a while that he or he and his wife were Elena Ferrante, a little piece of knowledge for you there. And this book just sounds so up my street. Like I say I hadn't heard of the author before. It's published by Europa but when I read the description I was like I have to have it and this book was really kindly sent to me by Europa. All of these books actually were sent to you by the publishers so thank you very much. Um, so this is about a couple who I think they're like quite young, they have this like passionate love affair. But after an argument, she's like, okay, I've got an idea. She's like, let's tell each other our deepest, darkest secrets and then it'll like bind us together. We'll be the only one who knows that thing about the other person and it'll like be good for our relationship. So they do, but then they obviously break it up. And it says that the guy, Pietro, is like haunted by the fact that she knows this about him. And then I think in later life, when like they're married to other people, they reconnect. So does that not sound very fun? I think it does. And yes, I'm excited to read it over the next couple of days. I also have Lemon by One Year Sun. This is published by Head of Zeus, who also sent it to me, so thank you. And I definitely, I think I talked about both of these in like an anticipated for the rest of the year video, because yeah, I cannot wait to read this. This is another piece of translated fiction, actually. God, didn't even realize I was ticking off those yearly reading girls. And um, this is like a psychological fiction thrillery book set in South Korea about um, a like cold case mystery of a high school girl who was murdered and it's known as like the high school beauty murders or something and it's years later and her sister is investigating it and it's a pretty short little book um, in fact all of these books are quite short for reasons that I cannot disclose to you now but you'll find out one day and yeah I'm very very excited to read it I've heard some really good things about it on Instagram this one came out this one comes out it's not out yet but i'm not exactly sure when you're seeing this video that's a november one this came out in october as did burn coat by sarah hall i've actually never read a sarah hall before despite the fact that she is 
a northern author and um, this is published by faber and faber sent me a copy so thank you like i say i've never read sarah hall but i really want to i've heard amazing amazing things about the author and this book sounds very dark and creepy it's about like a celebrated sculptor and it says her life will draw to an end in the coming days but then she gets like confined and i think it's like i'm in this studio and i think it's like a metaphor or like it is about corona but it, i don't think it is i think it's like a metaphor i don't want to know too much about this one because i've been told not to um so yeah these are the three books that i'll be reading in this vlog i cannot wait so it's a friday morning i'm about to do some work and then at my lunchtime i'm gonna pick up a book and i think i'm gonna pick up lemon i'm in a lemony mood so yes we will reconvene at my lunchtime in hindsight i was way too overdressed for work i think i was just excited about the fact it was Friday, but it's lunchtime, let's read lemon. Hello, it's now five o'clock and I finished work and it's so dark. I do not approve this message. It's just getting so dark now. It is actually the 5th of November today and I'm not sure what we're doing tonight. I think the plan initially was to go to someone that me and Alex know who are doing like fireworks in their garden and like pulled pork sandwiches, which I think sounds very delightful. And we might still do that. My only concern is I haven't been very well this week and it wasn't COVID, it was just a really bad cold and it has gone now, like I'm feeling much better. It's been like quite a few days, but I still have this like slight remnants of a cough. And whilst like that should be fine, I feel like we're all traumatized by not wanting to be that person who's coughing, especially with like, there's gonna be a lot of people there that I don't know, potentially children and I just don't wanna be like, ostracized but i want to do something since bonfire night and like i say i literally today's been the first day i've left the house since sunday so your girl has serious cabin fever but i don't know we'll see you didn't ask um also on my lunch i picked up lemon um and i read the first like 55 pages this is such a short book i kind of knew it was short i didn't realize how short it's like 147 pages long and it's also written like if you can see in these like pretty like short little paragraphs so i think hopefully i'm gonna fly through this so i knew from the blurb that we're following like i say the cold case murder of this girl high school girl in south korea who like leaves behind her sister who's investigating it but and maybe because it's so short we get thrown in like thrown straight in and in the first 55 pages we're not really given much chance to catch up we get like um immediately an interview scene between a young boy who obviously like goes to the high school with these girls and is clearly not very intelligent or just, you know, a bit vulnerable. And he's being like questioned really like aggressively by a detective. And I guess through that, we understand that this girl who went missing, Heon, she was last seen in a car with this like really rich boy, but then he has like an alibi. Um, but this other guy who's being questioned was on like a motorbike nearby because he was a delivery driver. And so they quite like him for it because she basically just disappeared and then showed up that night in the park and had been like murdered and she was like this super popular incredibly incredibly beautiful girl so i think that was a little bit of like exposition whilst also giving us like a scene and kind of like throwing us in in the middle of an investigation but the investigations being like narrated by heyon's sister daon who wasn't there it's sort of like in hindsight like she's saying you know in the years that have passed because it is a cold case this this interview makes so much sense to her now like, this is the one interview that she should have seen almost like she knows what's happened but she's like narrating it in the past so i do like that style i'm liking a lot of what's happening in this book so far but i'm just like wow okay so it's, it's all going on then we switch to a different perspective who was friends with the girls in high school or like at least knew of them and her talking about what it was like in the aftermath and what it was like at school because Heon was this like beautiful girl who everyone loved and then the family moved away and then in like the present timeline this woman runs into the sister Dao and like years later at university and they kind of get talking but bear in mind this is all in 55 pages like we're rapid and now we're back in Dao's perspective talking about like her childhood with Heon and their family setup and she obviously seems very like haunted by it I don't know that I'll tell you more about plot there's a really obvious person that it seemingly is and I'm like like within the first few pages so I assume it's not that I really hope it's not that yeah I did feel a bit like okay okay let's slow down but now that we've started getting a little bit about Down and Heon's childhood and like their interesting relationship as sisters because Down, despite being younger kind of takes on a caretaking role and she's talking about like a weird like the sister although she's very beautiful perhaps seems like she was quite troubled and um, there's some like really good eeriness about like just little things she's dropping in about their childhood so i am keen to keep reading i hope that i can kind of settle into it a bit more i feel like at the minute all i'm ever saying is like i wish this book was longer but hopefully i won't say that and it'll just be the kind of perfect bite size i like the like detached narration style of it and yeah we will see how i feel about it when i read some more hello so if i kept in the clip where i said where i was going tonight that was a lie plans have changed just gonna head into the village for like 
couple of drinks probably she out of house arrest and I can hear a lot of fireworks. I've been hearing them for the past two hours, but I'm yet to see one. And I actually hate fireworks, I think they're super boring. Like I would never choose to go and spend the evening watching fireworks, but I keep hearing them. So hopefully I'll see one. I see Alex has been using my G mug for his coffee. Remind me of your gender again? Oh yeah, you're a boy. These are for girls only. Wow, she looking so fresh, fresh to death back away so you can't see me. Good morning, happy Saturday. Had a nice evening last night, just got a little bit of dinner um, and a couple of drinks in the village. Didn't see any fireworks, but like I say, don't actually care. And yes, I finished Lemon last night, that's what I was gonna talk about. It is over there. So yeah, this was a very odd book. Um, it definitely wasn't what I expected at all. I didn't end up loving it um, by any means, but I also didn't end up hating it, which I was concerned I was gonna really not like it. I'd say this is a, a 2.5 or a three. It's very just like middle of the road, maybe a three. I like the vibes of it. So because it's so short, I don't think I can really say too much more about the plot. We're kind of looking into like various people who were attached to the murder of this girl in a quite an abstract way. I really like the vibes of it. It was very eerie. It was like, I think I mentioned before, like just odd little images or little like stories you'd get that gave it like a very creepy vibe, a very like something's not right vibe. And also it had a really scattered timeline in terms of chronology. So you'd get like perspectives from different characters and you kind of had to work out like right, who is speaking here and, and like different styles. So there's a few bits that are like a one-sided monologue of someone on the phone to like a psychiatrist, but you only get their side of it. Um, so I think that actually worked for such a short book and also because it is very obvious who, from I, immediately, I think, who killed this girl. Like you can have a pretty good guess of it from the first like chapter and then everything that you see as it goes on just like informs that. Um, and so when I was reading it, I was a bit like, this is weird, like they've made it so obvious. And I think this is when I thought it was gonna be more of like a typical mystery, but actually it never like resolves it. It never spells it out to you. Like it's so obvious that that's what's happened and you get like more and more evidence as you go along. Like it's never massively spelled out. I think right at the end it does like mention the person's name, but it's not like there's this moment of like, and this is what happened and how it happened and why it happened. Um, it's just sort of like, you can make your own conclusions. And I think that actually works because otherwise I was like, why are they making it so obvious? Like who's done it? But I don't think the point of it was to be like a whodunit mystery. I think it's more about like the impact of this thing that's happened on all of the people who were in Heyon's orbit and everyone who was kind of like touched by what happened to her. We see more of a collection of like pieces of people's lives and it kind of makes a mosaic effect about how this death affected them, even if they weren't necessarily like hugely related to it and I think that was clever um and it's quite a bleak book I'd say especially like towards the end it's very much like it's quite meditative um and it's quite bleak on like the meaning of life but it was really interesting actually the more I think about it the more I'm like I think I just went in expecting the wrong thing and I still didn't absolutely love it because it was quite like scattered but it was well written it was interesting that was lemon. I don't know what we're doing today. I want to do something fun, get out of the house. I'm going to pick up my next book and I can't decide. Betwixt Burncoat or Trust. I feel like Burncoat's like shorter. I'll probably like read this one quicker. But this one sounds like it's going to be really like bleak and brutal. And I'm like, do I want bleak and brutal on a Saturday? We want to keep the vibe light and fresh. But then do I want bleak and brutal on a Sunday when the vibe is not fresh because it's a Sunday? Do you feel? I think I'll pick up this. Let's pick up Trust. So it rained and put paid to my, to my plans of going outside. Uh, but then Alex went to the shop and bought like nice stuff to make sandwiches, like fish finger sandwiches and like brie and cranberry sandwiches, which was very nice. Although he did also lose our joint account card in the process. So you win some, you lose some. And this guy's still here. Ernie, where's your home, bro? You're living at my house rent free. I also started reading Trust. Uh, it was definitely the right decision. I'm really, really enjoying this book. So I am 60 pages in. It's like, again, I think it's only about 150 pages. I read like the first few sentences and I was like, oh my God, this is gonna be super dense and hard to read. It isn't, um, but I definitely, I'm taking my time with it, like especially compared to Lemon, which was written like really, really sparsely. This is a bit richer, I would say. And yeah, I'm taking my time with it, but I'm really enjoying it. So we're following this man called Pietra, who is like a 30 year old English teacher living in Italy because as I say, this is an Italian translation. It's actually translated by Jhumpa Lahiri, which is pretty cool. I haven't actually read any Jhumpa Lahiri, but I do want to. Um, and at the start of the novel, he's got this girlfriend who is 23, 
he's 30, okay. And he knows her because she used to be a student. So we've got some, some red flags there. And they have like a very volatile, like dramatic relationship. And they have this massive argument in which he's a little bit violent. Um, and she's like, okay, the way to save our relationship is, as I mentioned, we tell each other our worst secrets. So they do. You don't get them on the page, but I'm hoping that we will. So he tells her his and she's like, yeah, okay, that's really bad. And he mentions it's like an affair he was once embroiled in that would like bring his life crashing down or whatever. Then they end up breaking up like three days later. He meets someone else, um, a teacher this time rather than a student, gets married to her, has a child. His life's going pretty well. He publishes like a essay but then gets like a book deal and he's like traveling around italy giving like talks and stuff his life is pretty good but he's like really scared that um teresa his ex-girlfriend is gonna like tell his secret so he starts to get a bit paranoid and he writes this like letter like hey just like checking in i hope all's good with you haha <laughs> like cool cool and she just replies oh so you're scared huh which is exciting there's some like weird eerie things like her friend, Therese, he bump, like he calls one of teresa's friends to get her dress and she seems a bit frosty so he's like oh my god does she know? And then he's like, no, she'd never tell. Um, so I'm really excited about what the secret is. I imagine it might be something to do with him being like a bit of a pervert or a bit of a violent man. Uh, we'll see. He has this very much like this facade, like re reading from his perspective, you kind of warm to him because it's for the most part a very like domestic, just like not very high stakes, like novel. And I really like his narration style, but I'm getting vibes that maybe he's not the best, especially like the way he talks about his wife, they're having some problems. But yeah, I'm just really, really enjoying it. Love the writing. I can maybe see why um, there was like the Ferente conspiracy. He's also from Naples. And I was thinking like, oh, do I think the writing seems similar and kind of, but then also like they're translated by two different people. So not even sure that makes sense. But yeah, I'm just loving the writing style, loving like that balance of just very like daily life things and very introspective and interesting but then with this dark undertone and i can't wait to see what happens next but yeah loving this book very glad i picked it up fish finger sandwiches courtesy of alex and a little glass of wine i'm gonna enjoy my lunch hello good morning uh happy sunday also it's definitely not morning i did not get out of bed until like 11 a.m. i went out last night me and i went out just to the pub with some of our friends it was very very fun did not film anything and yeah uh it's a lovely day actually the sun is shining unlike yesterday so gonna have a really really chill sunday al's playing golf i might even like go for a walk although it is very cold but i think i need to be outside in the daytime and yeah gonna read and chill gotta film a video gonna have a nice sunday before i return to work i finished trust yesterday and let's talk about it i enjoyed this book a lot i think that the main thing i've taken from it is that i want to read more by dominico starnone because i really enjoyed his style of writing i really enjoyed his prose i thought it was a very clever book like i say i liked the, the introspection and like the pace of the novel um it didn't quite go in the direction i was expecting I, well i wasn't sure i was like it's either gonna be like very eerie very dark like and it's really gonna become about what the secret was i wouldn't say it was that i'd say it was much more about like i guess how we perceive ourselves the kind of way we write our own story and sort of the way your life is impacted by how other people perceive you if that makes sense so our main character pietro is kind of terrified throughout the book that teresa will tell his secret and that really shifts the way he acts he kind of tries to remodel himself because he feels under threat and he kind of tries to become a very good person or at least be perceived as being a good person and um, he feels like Teresa is wielding this over him and if he doesn't be a good husband or appear to be a good husband and you know as he becomes more of a public figure like it's all about that kind of outside perception I guess um and we don't ever find out what the secret was for either of them. And at the book, at the end of the book, it, it kind of shows that it wasn't really the point. And um, the book does sort of shift towards the very end. In the last like 20 pages, we get like a massive time jump and we get a perspective from Emma, who is Pietro's daughter when she's grown up. And we also get the last chapter from Teresa. And I think that was very clever. I really liked the way it ended and it did sort of circle back to like this idea that there is some sort of darkness in Pietro. And I like the way that then changed maybe your opinion about the rest of the novel, but also about how like, it wasn't really about what the secret was. It was about how knowing this secret or feeling like someone knew the secret about him changed Pietro, even though Teresa kind of at the end is like, I can't even really remember what the secret was. So I think that was really, really good. The book was also a lot about like education. Pietro becomes a public figure kind of a bit through like talking about education reform. And so there's like a lot of that 
stuff in here which was interesting i'm sure if maybe that's something the author's like very interested in himself because yeah it did seem like a lot of the stuff was about that and i'm not sure maybe how that fit into the other themes um but yeah i enjoyed it i enjoyed especially how that last chapter kind of makes you think is anything you've been told totally true can anyone have like objectivity when they're talking about themselves there's some really interesting stuff about like him and his wife and like their dynamics and again their dynamics being sort of so built on like the outside and what they think what each other are doing and how that then makes them make decisions very very interesting i'd say it's like a 3.5 to four but yeah i enjoyed it i definitely recommend it and like i say i will be continuing to read from this author hopefully so that's fun i'm gonna film a video now put her on and then i'll pick up my third book for this weekend reading vlog so i picked up burn coat uh, and i read like the first 40 pages i think i'm gonna really really enjoy this it's very weird i couldn't like quite get a hold on what was going on first perhaps because i didn't read the blurb really really like the writing i think i'm gonna enjoy it i'm headed out now because blind I head out because a couple of my friends are at the market and they said you want to join so i will go do that <laughs> home i had a shower and the christmas pajamas are on and i'm not sorry about it it's actually a matching set and yeah i'm feeling very christmasy i'm leaning into it and i'm gonna have a chill evening maybe like some candles maybe even play some like do they do like instrumental christmas music because i will be reading but i also really want to lean into christmas um and i think perhaps i'll need the jolly vibes because this book is very bleak i am really enjoying it though so we're following a woman living in a like vaguely post pandemic world the pandemic's kind of referenced in a very like abstract way you get the sense that she is ill and is like dying and i can't quite work out like how far away from like 2020 or an, an idea of 2020 we are like the word coronavirus isn't used but it talks about like masks and like when it happened and that kind of thing so edith our main character is a sculptor she lives in the lake district where she's lived all of her life and yet it seems like she is about to die potentially because of this like illness we kind of go between the present where she seems to be like making plans or preparations for her death and um, we look at the past her childhood she had quite a like, traumatic childhood something that happened with her mother when she was a child and then also there's this like another kind of timeline it's all like very much weaved together and you don't necessarily know where you are at any point like it takes a minute but the third one is like her speaking in second person to a man that she had a relationship with at the time of when the pandemic first kind of happened or that's the sense that i'm getting so he was an immigrant to the country and yeah they have this like affair i think that begins around the time of lockdown and that's kind of where i'm up to at the minute the prose is stunning i haven't read any sarah hall before but i have heard that about her and i would completely agree it is really rich very like haunting like i say this book feels bleak it feels very everything has a dark undertone she really takes her time with like every description the descriptions of like her sculptures and the way she works these moments of childhood with her mother it's all just like very haunting even this relationship has like undertones of i don't know like grief i don't know what's going to happen with that but it doesn't seem like it's going to go too well and i would say it's like maybe a little bit prose over plot thus far but like there's enough plot to keep me interested and also that doesn't really bother me so i am very interested to see where it goes are we going to find out more is it going to be like more actively like dystopian corona who knows but yeah i think it's gonna be a bit bleak so let's make my house feel festive while i read <laughs> I've now finished burnt coat and as expected this is a very very bleak book um it is a kind of like alternate pandemic story like we learned more as we went on and it's like called a different thing the symptoms are different the in terms of like how it reacts and how the world copes is very different um but it certainly takes that as its inspiration and she takes quite like a harsh look at the lack of everything in the pandemic the kind of cruelness and it's definitely me not looking at like the hope or the love that comes out of it. It's very much looking at the terrible things and the terrible ways that humans treat each other, which is, yeah, interesting. Um, it's a love story and it's a tragedy um, and it's about grief and motherhood. 
and it's really really sad but really beautifully written it has kind of at the heart of it this house burnt coat that she lives in and this like lockdown with this man that she's in love with and yeah it's really like painful and bleak and very very sad but it is like exceptionally written and i think it's an interesting take on like a pandemic novel i think that my favorite bits were like the way it captured this idea of like lockdown and like proximity between her and this man and also i love the bits about her and her mother and like this strange relationship um and yeah i'll definitely be picking up more from sarah hall i don't know what to rate it because i did really think it was a really good book um but also it was kind of sad and depressing i think it's like a, a 3.5 to a 4 again that's kind of been the the vibe of this but um yeah i'll definitely read some more of hers that are hopefully not well definitely not pandemic related so yeah these are the three books that i read this weekend and yeah i enjoyed all of them to different degrees none of them i'm is like a new favorite but i didn't hate any of them either so yes please do let me know if you've read any of these books or if you're interested too if you've been kind of anticipating them as well although i realize a couple of them are out yeah thanks for watching thanks for spending the weekend with me it's been a pretty chill one like i say let's try in the comments and also don't forget to check out my anna louisa jewelry link in the description which will give you buy one get one 60 percent off and thanks again to anna louisa for sponsoring me obviously i would love if you subscribed my instagram my story graph will be linked down below and i'll see you in my next one bye